I've spent my whole life obsessed with maps. I remember as a child, I used to sit in the backseat of the car with the local roadmap on my knee and follow along every twist and bend. When I'm walking down the street and I see a really cool photo of a map on the side of a sign or on an information board, I have to stop and take a photo. When I learned that there was this profession where I could make maps every day and be surrounded by maps, I couldn't help but jump at the opportunity. I love maps because they help us understand a place and tell us a story about its past, present and future. But how exactly do maps help us plan our cities? Hi there! I'm Dan Ifadges, urban planner, change maker, and host of Code Futures, the newest channel about city planning in Australia. In today's video, I'm going to be exploring the role of maps in helping to shape the future of our cities. Maps are a graphical representation of the world we live in. Essentially, they're just a combination of lines, shapes, colors, and textures, which all come together to tell us a particular story about a place. As someone who spent years analysing, interpreting and making all sorts of different maps, I've recently been reflecting on what it is that maps do to help planners, well, plan our cities. I'm going to focus on three areas where I think maps play a key role. Firstly, maps can be used as a reference tool for showing land use patterns and defining the extent of urban areas. This is really important for planners because it sets out the framework for decision making and helps to inform what goes where. Australia's population is growing rapidly, but there's not an unlimited amount of land to accommodate all of this growth. Let's zoom in closely to the metropolitan area of Melbourne and you'll see that the urban areas are ringed by expansive areas of farmland, bushland, national parks and protected reserves. This is common across all cities in Australia. When you overlay a metropolitan planning map, you can start to see this delineation between the natural areas and the urban areas more clearly. There's a name for this. It's known as the urban growth boundary. And essentially, this defines the city limits. Another way maps help to shape cities is by showing the relationship between places and creating a system of spatial organisation. When you look at a metropolitan planning map, you'll notice there's different sized dots and blobs across the page. These dots represent a structure or a hierarchy that tell planners about the size and scale of that place. This is important because it helps to create a structure to help manage urban change in a coordinated way. Let's go back to that map of metropolitan Melbourne. You can clearly see there's a three tier hierarchy of centres. The larger the centre, the greater the role it has in providing new homes, supporting jobs growth and being a diverse hub of activity. Increasing density in existing centres isn't the only way to accommodate a growing population. Maps can also identify the location of new areas for future development. Generally, these areas are located on the fringes of cities because that's where the largest parcels of unencumbered land tend to be. Finally, maps show how places are connected. They bring to life urban transport systems and show the movement network of cities. Using lines, arrows, dots and annotations, you can see new transport links, future roads and proposed infrastructure upgrades. When you overlay the movement networks with the settlement hierarchy and land use patterns, all of a sudden you get this really complete picture of a city and where it's headed in the future. And in a nutshell, that's how planners use maps to plan cities. In summary, maps provide the fundamental building blocks for city planning. They're a functional tool that really do help city planners and decision makers manage growth and change in a sustainable and coordinated way. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on how you think maps help to shape cities. Do you think they're useful? Feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.